Good to see you, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So what's been the highlight so far? Who did you want to meet today? Aaron Judge, but I'm sure everybody says that. But <laughs> this is my first time at Yankee Stadium, so it's a great day for it. Obviously, the last couple days have been a little rainy here. A little? But, yeah, I've been here since <laughs> Thursday, so I was like, oh, no, I hope it clears up. But it's, it's been great. How was the interaction with you and Aaron? He's way bigger than even people think. Like, yep. yeah, I know, you know he's big, but then when you get next to him, it's like, oh, my gosh, you could probably play football or just about any sport he wants to. Probably, probably be pretty good at basketball, too. But, yeah, he's, 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 he's a good, good guy down to earth. He was uh, with, you know, Jalen Brunson. The Knicks came here last week and took a picture with him. He said, you're the one who should be playing basketball. I should be playing <laughs> baseball. No kidding. Yeah, he's, like, double my height. So, yeah. It is amazing, though, because you see him in uniform, you see him playing the game, but yeah. when you go up and actually talk to him, meet him, I mean, even today, I walk around, I feel like his little brother. I mean, yeah. he is huge. He's huge. He's huge. He definitely, he's pretty swole, too. Like, it's not, he's not just tall, he's he's pretty swole, so. <laughs> and he was an athlete. He played all sports. How about you growing up? Were you all sports or just yeah. basketball only? I played all sports growing up. I played softball for a little bit, played soccer, ran track. I, I tried to do just about everything. I was pretty competitive, so uh, I wanted to try everything there was. I had an older brother, so I did everything that he did too, and I loved it, yeah. Now, I, we met earlier, and I told you I, I have an 11-year-old daughter. Doesn't like sports. Her father's a Yankee announcer, doesn't want to watch the games. <laughs> but she had to do a report for school, and she yeah. did a report on you. Oh, wow. I'm sure you hear these stories all the time. Does that put pressure on you, you know these little girls look up to you like that? Honestly, I don't think it's pressure. I think it's something that's really cool. Um, you hear about it, you know, oftentimes, and it's not ever something that gets old to me. Like, I, that's never something I take for granted because I remember doing those those projects in grade school. Like, I would do it on Mia Hamm, the, one of the best <laughs> soccer players of all time. I, I remember dressing up as her in, like, second grade. So uh, it's cool to kind of be in that position now. And, um, you know, life goes fast. I feel like I was just in second grade. So that's not anything I ever feel like there's pressure from. I mean, a lot of the times these kids come to, come to my games and whether we win or lose or no matter how I play like they're just still as happy that they just get to be there and be around really good athletes and for me like that's that's what's cool about it have you ever taken a step back and said what is it about me that I mean I'm part of the zeitgeist now and I, I've touched people that they want to get involved in the WNBA people love you yeah I think I mean, obviously it started in college, and I think people were just fascinated with the way I play the game. Like, it's very up-tempo, it's very fast. Um, I play with a lot of passion, a lot of joy, but to me, like, it's completely different when I step off the court. Like, I know basketball is not the end-all, be-all for me. Um, like, it's, you know, life is m so much more than that. I think it just speaks to how my parents raised me, and obviously I'm one of the most competitive people um, to ever play basketball. Honestly, that's how I think, and everything I, I do, I want to win, but... Um, yeah, I think it's that, and then obviously bring that to the WNBA. I think people were just fascinated, not only with myself, but with our team at Iowa. Kind of, I took a different route. I went, I went to the home state school, and uh, you know, wanted to take them to a Final Four. And lucky enough, we kind of, we made two of them, and people kind of just rallied around that whole thing, and, and really loved it. And that kind of carried to the WNBA. Hey. Well, you can't mention, I'm from Ohio, and you can't mention Ohio I, because Michael makes fun of us. So, I mean, he still thinks we're like riding stagecoaches and stuff, you know, yeah. and when plows. So Just Paul. I have challenged Michael to a basketball game. So now we have a, we got an official, Michael, right across the street. Michael will have his Between Chuck Taylors. Between games in the double hunter? Yeah, he'll have his Chuck Taylors on yeah. the old gym That's what I heard. Shorts. I heard there's a good gym across the street, <laughs> yeah. so maybe let's go over there and get, to, get a game in quick. We got a little time. We might yeah. go to Rucker Park. I huh? love it. <laughs> 3-2 count on Marcus Simeon, top of the third turn with the great Caitlin Clark here on yes. And the payoff. And there's a walk. You know, I, I was thinking about your schedule, you know, the whole Iowa schedule. And then in an eye blink, you're playing the WNBA. Yeah. Like, you're exhausted. Now you have this Olympic break. But, man, it must be tired. Yeah, it's it's definitely not something you can prepare for. Like, it's, it's just how it is. It's what everybody goes through. And I played as... Obviously, the maximum number of college games you can get into the national championship, and actually, the Fever played the first preseason game. So I probably had one of the shortest turnarounds of any draft prospect of all time. So uh, it was definitely a little bit crazy, but uh, I feel like now I'm kind of getting my feet under me. Um, the Olympic break has been nice, and you know, ready for these last 14 games of the regular season. Now I'm I'm saying this, not Kate McCoy. You should be in the Olympics. We agree. Uh, right. I mean, so it, has it been tough for you to watch? Because a lot, e even the coach said. You know, if we make that pick later, Caitlin Clark's probably here. 
Honestly, like I've watched and I I just love international basketball. I think it's so different. And you also watch the men. It's it's very different from how the NBA is played. It's it's a little different from the WNBA. Obviously, the international game is a lot different than college, which I just came from. So um, I think in time it gives you something to work for. And obviously, it was a, it's a tough turnaround. I you know only played 10 games in the WNBA before they you know picked the roster. So um, that team is so talented. I think the USA um, on the women's side is just so dominant, and they play tomorrow for the gold medal. And I, I really don't see them having any trouble winning. So um, I think it just shows how advanced our, our, our country is in women's basketball. And I think it just should show people how talented we are and how, how fun it is to watch. But it's definitely definitely something for me to work for in 2028. And obviously that's in, in L.A. So that would be a, a fun first opportunity for myself. Were you stunned that Serbia almost beat? <laughs> wow. Uh, I wouldn't say I was stunned. I mean, I wasn't stunned at the fact that they came back. I knew they were going to come back and win. I mean, LeBron was never losing that game. Steph Curry was unreal in that game. It was, he was so fun to watch, and that's what he's capable of any night. So um, Serbia is really good. I think it shows how talented, um, you know, other countries are on the men's side and even on the women's side. But on the men's, it's you see a lot of those guys are in the NBA, and then they go play for their country and take a lot of pride in that. And um, I mean, it'll go down as probably one of the best Olympic games of all time. So um, I don't think they're going to have any problem with France. I think that game might be starting here soon. So, uh, yeah, but one of the best games I've, I've watched in a really long time, honestly. Thanks, Caitlin. Now people turn it off our game to, to watch. No, 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 they're not going to have any problem with it. Nobody's ever turning the off Yankee the game. Yankees. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it starts at three, so yeah. got about an hour. Two and two on Langford. Runners on first and second with two outs. One nothing Yankees. Top of the third. Missed up and away. Three and two. Who's your favorite player in the NBA? Oh gosh, in the NBA, that's tough. I mean, I love Steph just the way he plays the game, um, and he's a great guy. I mean, I love LeBron. Um, that's tough. There's so many, and I don't think people always realize how much talent and skill those guys really have. Like, you go watch them work out, and, like, they don't miss. Like, they're just, they're incredible at what they do, and when you meet them up close and watch them up close, they're they're huge guys, and it's it's really good basketball. It's, it's awesome. I'm a huge fan of the NBA, so, um, yeah, it's I have it on as much as I can. I don't really have a team. I never really had a team. I just tried to watch as much as I could, honestly. 3-2 count on Langford. Strike three, and that'll do it, y'all. <laughs> Caitlin, thanks yeah. so much for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of the Thank game. Thank you, guys.